in the middle of this Occupy movement and all that stirred up. I mean, it is interesting. It is this subject is one that, as you mentioned, I've been writing about for years. I guess what I find so exciting is that we we, we have yet to see where this Occupy movement is going to go. And of course, people are quick to disparage it and toss it off as irrelevant and suggest that they don't know what they're talking about or they don't have any coherent plan. But the incredibly exciting thing, I think, is that they have already kind of changed the conversation. You know, all summer that was about talking about the debt ceiling and the deficit and how, who, you know, how deep the cuts would be. And all of a sudden, there's a whole different focus to what people are talking about and what will be tolerated in terms of, let's say, the greed coming from the corporate sector. And I think that's a huge, huge change. The truth is that for the past 30 years, what's been going on has been a massive transfer of income and wealth, this is true in both Canada and the United States, from the middle class and the lower class, if you will, to the people at the very top. A massive transfer making us a less egalitarian society with less social cohesion, uh, all kinds of implications for our well-being as individuals and as a society, uh, not to mention the viability of our democracy. But despite that, despite the enormity of the change, the change was kind of going on sort of invisibly. At least the subject of that concentration of income and wealth at the top was kind of taboo. Like it was, it was okay to talk about poverty and the poor and we should do something about the poor, but it wasn't okay to talk about that concentration of wealth at the top. We're supposed to keep our eyes looking down, not up. If you dared to talk about the rich having too much, then you were immediately kind of dismissed or denounced as, you know, oh, you're just jealous of success, you know, or you're trying to wage class warfare. Uh, you know, there, there, there was a refusal to allow that kind of debate to take place. And, and what I love about the Occupy Wall Street movement is that they have shone the spotlight directly on that issue. They've shone it directly on the top 1%.